think it's interesting that in in most of the um, Roger Hammerstein uh, musicals, yes. it's, it's, it's not just fluff and laughter. You know, there are a lot of things, issues they talk about, right. political issues, racial yes. and stuff like that. Right, you know? right. So, so there's, there's the political issue in, in this one. Absolutely. And I'm quite interested to know, that because I, I don't know, how much of this musical is ever played in um, Germany? Well, it's a very good question. I think the, the second half of the show comes as a surprise. You know, people have always think of The Sound of Music as, you know, this beautiful yeah. show and, the, you know, rolling mountains and, <laughs> you know, glorious songs and Maria doing her thing in the mountain. And then suddenly, by surprise, yeah. you know, this element of the, of the Nazi occupation. But I think what's, what's clever about the show is it's, it's not done in a way that's in your face or alienates the audience or, you know, because we have a lot of children in the show, you know, mm -hmm. it is essentially a family show. So it's kind of touched on, you know, we don't show any of the horrific, you know, occurrences that happened during that time. And the way that the, the musical structured is that it's the start of the Nazi occupation of, of, of um, Austria. So we only start to get a feeling that something's in the air and yeah. we see towards the end yeah. of the musical that there is actual physical occupation from the Nazis. And I think the fact that it is not so, I mean, we could never make it, you know, so intensely political. And, um, and yet it is loved the world over, even in places where people are sensitive about, you know, this aspect, this political aspect of it. Yeah. I think people accept um, the, it for what it is historically, and that's kind of the show touches on it, and they focus on the real aspect, and that is the brilliance of this construction of the musical. Yeah. But would it be then, would it be sensitive for, for it to be played in Germany for, for, you know, the German people? What do you think? I don't think so. I think mm -hmm. it's been performed there many times, and I think, as I said, because it is, it's not that it's dealt with in a light-hearted way, but it, because it's in the context of yeah. a musical yeah. and we don't push buttons too intensely, okay. um, I think they accept it. I mean, there are lots of, of museums and nods and salutes to in Germany to what happened, you know, and people are very much aware of it in, in a lot of art forms. Um, people have depicted, you know, this horrific time in the history of Germany. And, um, you know, perhaps some people see that as a, as a way of healing, of moving forward and, and yes. accepting, yeah. you know, what happened? Fantastic. I'd like to, I'd like to uh, ask you about what you think might be the backstory of uh, the captain. How, um, well, he, he had the children, the wife and all that, yeah. and she died, and how did he become the way he, he you know? I think the most important thing to, to, to remember here is that each of these little children reminds him of his wife. And, you know, coming home to an environment where you have these six innocent, seven innocent little faces looking up at you and reminding you of this woman who you adored and loved so much, who's now gone, has obviously alienated him from spending time with them. You know, he's spent focus on his work, on his military career, on spending time more in Vienna, away from the home, which is why he gets so many of these nannies and these, um, you know, to come in and look after the children, and one after the other, the kids just kind of, you know, they're not mom, they're not mom, so we're going to give them a hard time, so dad's got to come back and put a, you know, a new person to look after the kids. So it, you know, and it's a, it, it happens full circle all the time. And eventually, this remarkable woman comes into their lives and um, is completely different to anybody that's looked after the kids. And father starts to go, hey, wait a second, something's very different here. And we start to see that this isn't just any woman, this is Maria. And, you know, and I think he starts to become more involved. He, uh, Maria gets the kids to sing again, which they used to do when mom was around. And all these things that start to bring them kids closer to the, to, to the captain Well, again. This, this transformation from being regimented to, yes. to be happy again yes. is what we see in the movie and, and right. the musical. Yes. What, what I'm curious to know is how, how... I can't imagine him turning from, I don't know, a loving father because the kids definitely love him so much. Yes. Turning from, from that kind of father to, to the, uh, the uh, regimented kind yes. of figure he was. Yes. So I, to I, someone I loving. Can't. No, no. From the other the way loving, around. Yes. The other way around. I, yes, well, I think, I think, again, if you focus on the fact that, you know, he was a very much a military man who perhaps wasn't as, you know, as endearing as we see him once we see him in the show, in the musical. Um, but mom was the one that was kind of looking after the kids and dealing with dad in, a, in, in his kind of military way. But suddenly you take mom out of the equation, he's still a military man, but now has to deal with the, the, the jobs that mom, the relationships yeah. that kids have and with their mom. So there's no one to, to have 
to put in the other element, the, the non-regimented. Correct. So he has to take that over, you know. Such and, a man, right? He can't. <laughs> it's, and it almost feels impossible, but you kind of get a sense that these, um, all these things that he starts to do, that mom would probably used to do, like singing with the children, you know, saying goodnight to them, taking them to bed, softens him, you know. And I think the loss of his wife is a huge reality check for him. And, um, you know, and breaks down this military man and Maria successfully does that and, and I think that is why she's seen as such an iconic figure you know many reasons but one of which is the way she deals with the captain and she gets him to embrace this family mm -hmm. <laughs> the other thing that I, I can't reconcile is maybe it's from the movie I mean we, we relate to the movie because we see so much of yeah. it right and ironically the, the musical was before the movie you know yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> the kids in the movie weren't as as naughty <laughs> I can't believe that, that any nanny can't, can't control this. Yes. You know? Right. So, so do, do you deal with this? Well, I think one of, the, one of the things that we need to remember is that this is a show that was created in 1959, this musical. Yeah. And we are now still, in this day and age, in 2014, mm -hmm. we are still celebrating and playing and performing this musical around the world. So now one goes, isn't it outdated? Don't people kind of go, go well, this doesn't make sense anymore to kids of this generation? So one of the key aspects of putting on a musical like this in this day and age is to find ways where you can contemporize it without changing what is clearly a period piece. So what have you done? And I think one of the keys of that is the way in which the children behave. Okay. okay. So they've got to still be kind of, you know, Austrian kids in the way that they look, in the way that they behave, but they're slightly more natural as in terms of how our modern day kids behave. So, for example, it's really important for me as a director to keep the sort of... Um, childlike nature of the children because that's important for us to see on stage that these children are being children so by letting them be children as they are in 2014 they go on stage and you know sort of the actors uh, the audiences look at them and go oh well those are kids like we recognize it other kids go oh those are like my friends you know they behave like my friends yet they still have an element of the period but they're certainly not behaving in the same way as kids in that period would, you know? so it's point. slightly more contemporized but you don't feel like it's out of context or it's out of period and I think that's important so that our audiences remain uh, it remains pertinent to them and it remains relevant to them without destroying what was you know a musical written in 1959 mm. which is clearly about Austria then well, well you're thought of everything <laughs> Well, I, have, I have a question. I have a Here's question. A question. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you you work with a with a new cast of uh, local kids yes. with every with every stop, and uh, what, why is there a need for that? Um, there is there are a couple of reasons. There are practical reasons, of course, and that is that we we don't want to tour children throughout the world. You know, they've got to continue with their school careers. They've got to, you know, mom's not going to let, uh, you know, their little kids wander around on a global tour when uh, they should be at home and studying and doing all of those things. So, so there's the practical reasons of having the, the kids not tour with the company. But mm. then there's also the fact that we want to embrace a little bit of each country that we go to mm. by bringing in a local elements from the show. And the best way to do that is by actually making the kids part of each country that we go to so mm -hmm. you know and I think what's you know people have said to me but you know I don't believe that we're seeing a, a little Singaporean boy there trying to be an, an Austrian von Trapp it doesn't make sense he doesn't have blonde hair and blue eyes you know it doesn't well make we have a, a black mother at best well, in the, the Carrie Underwood version exactly exactly <laughs> yeah. and I think there is enough sort of suspension of disbelief the yeah, audience no. buys into this family straight away yes. and um and I think it's quite it's fantastic for Singapore to come here and go, oh, these are our kids, you know, they represent mm -hmm. Singapore, or to go to New Zealand and say, oh, these, are, these kids represent New Zealand. So I think it's fantastic that we have that kind of local flavor, that, that little element of the show that mm -hmm. is something new and fresh that each country sees for themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, you, 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 you touched on the topic of, uh, of like, uh, participation, and, uh, and I, I think this is what, what's so special about this production, right, in that it started off as a reality a reality show and then and then uh, it continues to have like uh, let's well uh, like uh, participants from every from every country yes. like uh, is this like a uh, 
a, a, a new uh, way of promoting... Uh, <laughs> well, it's a very interesting question because a lot of people say to me, how do you advertise a show? How do you market a show? How do you get audiences to come and see a show? And if you look at this day and age of reality TV, of people choosing their Marias, of people finding... Um, you know, draw cards to the theatre. There are lots of musicals out there that are using celebrities to, right. you know, in roles so that they draw cards. And absolutely, you can see that as the same thing. You know, here we are in Singapore and we have this little network of children that are in the show and they have their own little network of people. And so suddenly you have a different kind of audience coming because they're coming to support their local kids. You're coming people that are, are coming to support the show because the sound of music is, you know, historically so popular and famous and they know all the songs so yes again it is an additional draw card certainly yes yes okay yeah just Great. something is interesting from the directors we are working are you one who plans everything in the beginning or are you see what happens and then mm. you go home and with each think local about cast it again I think there is, on a show like this, which was first created in 2006, it is important to stay honourable to the creative team who put it together then. And, um, and we do that absolutely, so that this production, whether you see it here or you see it in London or Hong Kong or New York, remains true right. to so, the original. So you mean this is based on the production in 206? In 206, the London ah, Palladium okay. version. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Right. Thanks for bringing the musical here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Look forward to seeing it. Good. Thank you very, thank much. You very much. Nice <laughs> to meet you. Mm, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Keep well.